this is why I'm not getting very many videos done at the moment. Because whenever I sit down, she wants cuddles. Then I have to give her cuddles. Look how cute she is. Hello friends. I am very excited today to finally be getting around to filming my Actioning Abundance Practical series. And I'm going to be kicking it off with a video that pulls together two elements of the Actioning Abundance approach. And that is bigger portions and how to action them. And then also getting rid of smaller plates, cups, bowls, cutlery, etc. So my plan with this is to take each of the individual elements of the actioning abundance approach and to break each one of them down with some practical steps, things that you can do to go and make those things happen. Now, obviously, like with all of my content and sharing, some elements of the steps, some elements of the Actioning Abundance approach may be more relevant to you than others. So as always, please take what helps and leave the rest. So with no further ado, let's jump in. Number one, getting rid of the small plates, cutlery, bowls, cups, etc. that you may be using. Now, I understand that there can be some genuine personal preference with these choices. And I also understand that some elements of neurodiversity can present or show up in this way or with a preference towards certain pieces or sizes of cutlery or crockery. However, I also know that this can and does frequently show up as a disordered behaviour, as a restrictive tool. And therefore, it can be really important in recovery to be very honest with yourself about where this may be showing up and to apply opposite action, to challenge yourself to use bigger bowls, to use bigger plates, to use proper sized spoons, knives, forks. As I say, I'm making space here for those personal preferences, for those individual choices. However, everyone, I think, can benefit from being really honest and curious about what may be driving. And even if you do think something is due to personal preference or for a sensory purpose or for neurodiverse factors, I think it's really important to explore making sure that there is not eating disorder playing a part in that behaviour. What I found really, really useful in recovery was putting the same bowls and plates that I would routinely use right to the back of the cupboard and saying, no, I am going to change. I am going to use proper sized plates, proper spoons. I am going to use different bowls, different plates, because we're not just talking here about the sizes. We're also talking about how there can be a disordered drive to use the same plate or bowl. And that can link and does link very much to the portion element that we're going to be talking about today. And that's why I thought it was so important that we start here. And we start with that need to critically evaluate your choices when it comes to crockery, to utensils and to challenge them where you feel the eating disorder is showing up. Now let's move on to the bigger portion element or increasing your portion, something that is important in recovery and something that is also a big part of actioning abundance. I have broken this down into five key elements for actioning this element of the abundance approach. And the place that I would like to start is not necessarily the easiest, but it is a really important one. And it is the question of how much do I want? Now, for obvious reasons, this requires a degree of connection with your core self. And that may be something that doesn't feel accessible for you, depending on where you are at in your recovery journey. But I do think that this is absolutely critical to approaching increasing of portions and honouring hunger. Asking that question, 
how much do I want? And for example, in my own recovery journey, I remember this coming up where, say, it was a pick and mix. I'd be thinking, oh, how much, how much do I have? I don't, I don't know. What's the right, should I, how, how much is too much? How much is this? How much is that? Like, what's the right amount to have? And actually checking in with myself and thinking, well, how much do I want? And my core self's immediate response in that moment would have been all of it. All of it. I want that tub. And that was what I had to listen to. Same goes with a pizza. How much do I want? I want to destroy this entire thing. That's what I need to do. Tuba Pringles. How much do I want? I don't want to sit on the sofa and I just want to make my way through the whole lot of them. That's what I need to listen to. And so I'm starting here, like I say, not because this is easy, but because it is a simple core element of the recovery process to trust and listen to your body and your core self. And so whilst all the other things I'm going to go on and talk about may be more applicable or actionable if you are less connected with your core self, I do think this is a very important place to start. Because no matter what somebody else portions for you or what you would plate for somebody that's in recovery or what a friend might do, or all of these other things I'm going to talk about, we have to keep coming back to that core thing of how much do you want? And like I say, this requires you to be checking in with your core self because your eating disorder's opinion on that is going to be very different. And it may be that where you're at in recovery, the noise of your eating disorder's opinion and suggestions around this may overshadow your core self's noise. But if you are able to connect with that core truth, listen to it. That is your core self. That is your body telling you what you need to do. And that is the thing. And that is that was so important for me in recovery to really start to pay attention to what my body wanted, what my core self wanted and to start actioning that. So. Now moving on to something that may feel a little more accessible. And this is asking yourself the question, what would I serve or give to a friend? Or what would I serve or give to somebody else who was in recovery? This can be something that's really useful as a point of reference and as a point to check in with yourself either at the preparation stage or at the reflection point. So either whilst you are making and or at the point where you have finished making something and you then look at it. So whilst you are making something, thinking, how much would I make for a friend or a family member? How much would I make for somebody who is in recovery? To check in with that. And it can also be useful to use this again once you have finished making or serving something. And to honestly just take a moment to look and think, would I serve this to somebody else in recovery? Would I serve this to a friend? And I think that was something, particularly for me in the moments where, like I was saying with the previous point, maybe I didn't feel as connected with my core self or maybe my eating disorder was being really loud. That might have been something that felt more accessible in that moment to make sure that I was upping the ante on the portion front and actioning abundance. I also just want to jump in and make reference to the fact that at any step along the making, serving or eating point, where clarity may show up that you haven't met your needs, that something hasn't been adequate, you can change it then and there. It doesn't matter if it's at the preparation stage, it doesn't matter if you're halfway through cooking, whether you've served it, whether you've started eating it, whether you've nearly finished it. At any point along that process, if you get clarity of, that wasn't enough, I needed to have done more, you can change it right in that moment and that's what you need to do. The eating disorder mindset can be incredibly good at stalling action taking in the now for preference of, oh, tomorrow. Oh, we'll do that later. Oh, next time you make this, you'll do more. Oh, next time you'll, you know, put more on your plate in the first place. No, call that out. It is EDBS and what you need to do at any point, like I say, maybe you're getting the ingredients out. Maybe you're in the middle of cooking. Maybe you're at the point of serving. Maybe you're halfway through the meal. Maybe you've just finished it. Doesn't matter. At any point, 
in that. If you get the clarity and that recognition of should have done more, need to do more, you go and action it right in that moment. And if that means that you need to go back and you need to start making more of that thing, you go and do that. And if you don't have the ingredients to be able to do that, then you need to make sure that you go and eat something, that you go and action the fact that in that moment you have clarity that it wasn't enough. And so whether it's that you are able to go and get more of whatever it is, that thing that you're making, putting more of it in the pan, serving it more on the plate, getting another portion, whatever it might be, or whether it's that actually you go, oh, I can't do that right now. You still need to go and do something in that moment. Now is where your power is. And now is the thing that you need to use in recovery. So. Now I'm going to move on to the next practical tip of actioning bigger portions or larger portions. And that is to seek support from a recovery buddy, someone who is clued up about the whole recovery process or certainly clued up about what it means to be in recovery and the needs of somebody who is in recovery in terms of honoring all hunger, eating without restriction and challenging eating disorder fears and rules. Having somebody else serve up or plate things for you can be a really useful tool in actioning abundance, in taking steps towards increasing your portion sizes and challenging disordered portioning. I will say at this point, it's super important that you take responsibility of your recovery in that if somebody who is a recovery buddy misses the mark slightly when asked to do this, you have to voice that. Your eating disorder may want you to stay silent in that moment, but you need to voice it. If somebody who you've asked to say plate up a dinner and they plate it up and you look at it and you think, oh, that's not really that different to how much I would have put on my own plate. It may be that, that person is tentative and unsure. It may be that their tentativeness is coming from a place of love and they just want to push you, but not too much. And actually it's your responsibility to say to that person, that needs to be more. I actually want you to be a bit more radical with this. Like that's going to be really helpful to me right now. Having those conversations is so, so important. You lead the way with your support network. People are your co-pilots. You are the pilot, you are flying the plane and whoever it is that is in your support network, they take the position of co-pilot. They are there for support and accountability, for encouragement and for calling out the EDBS if and when they spot it. But you are pilot and you have to take responsibility for your position as such. Coming back to the practical application of this point, it may be that you need to send a message or have a conversation with a member or a few members of your support network and ask them to help with breakfasts, with snacks, with dinners, with grazing bowls, with different ways in which that they can help with portioning things out. And it may be something that you do as a sporadic thing. It could be something that you make an agreement that actually they're going to do all of your dinners or all breakfasts. It can also be really helpful to have days where you hand this over. So actually saying over a weekend, for example, say if you have a partner or a family member that you live with saying, actually, I'm going to put it in your hands. I want you to lead the way with portioning and plating up everything. There's all sorts of ways that you can do this. And I really want you to remember the different points that I'm making as I go along here. The point initially about paying attention to what your core self knows, the point about taking responsibility and being the pilot, and the point about at any stage along this, you can voice that it is not enough. If you sit down, if you're a mouthful in, if you're halfway through, if you get to the end of it, and at any point you think, that wasn't enough, you need to voice that then and there and take action based on that clarity. It is so important in recovery that we are compassionate towards ourselves, but it is also imperative that we are brutally honest and that we take action wherever you discover restriction or eating disorder showing up. So the next one is this idea of filling the plate. 
When I started to get honest with myself about my portions in recovery, I recognised there was this consistent tendency for a fair amount of plate to still be on show or visible in some way when I was making things. And if it wasn't, it was usually because it was covered or hidden by vegetables or lower energy dense foods. And so that was something I had to get very, very honest with myself about. And I had to challenge directly by filling the plate. And I made a commitment that the meat and the carb element would go on and would predominantly fill the plate before any vegetables would go on if I wanted them. The truth is in recovery, I didn't really want vegetables very much. I feel like my body had quite a lot of those. And actually, when I was honest with myself, it was not going, oh, yeah, peas. The odd thing, but generally it didn't. And so actually something that was really important was to recognise that tendency to bulk or fill meals out with low energy dense food, with salads and vegetables, and to address that by plating up the meat and carb portion first and making sure that that was predominantly filling the plate. And then vegetables, if I wanted them, could be a kind of afterthought thing, a thing on the side. That was something that was really important and generally just recognising that the plate need to be full. And finally, the last point I want to make is going large. When you get the option to pick portion sizes of things, maybe it's in McDonald's, maybe it's in another kind of fast food place, maybe it's at the cinema with popcorn, maybe it's at the shop with some pick and mix, going for the large option was such a game changer in my recovery journey. I noticed a tendency that whilst I maybe no longer went for the small version of things and I had upped to the medium or the normal, whatever the name was for that thing, I recognised a continued aversion or resistance to the large options and actually committing to going large, to having the bigger one, to going, yes, I will have that extra large popcorn at the cinema. That was such a mental game changer for me in recovery. And it's something I really, really recommend. There's all sorts of places and ways that you can apply this, both in terms of when you're going shopping and you're buying things, whether it's that you're buying a box of chocolates and actually you go for the big box of chocolates, not the little box of chocolates, or whether it's that you're going for ice cream and actually you get the, the big tub of ice cream rather than the smaller one, or the cinema with the popcorn scenario I just gave, or the pick and mix, or going out and getting a big pizza, you know, going to a takeaway and ordering a large meal Meal. all of these different things it was an absolute game changer for me to be proactively and intentionally choosing the larger option and I think this comes back to a topic I'm going to be discussing in, a, in another video shortly about the difference between defending your territory and attacking the option to kind of come to that normal place that medium it's better than going small there's no doubt about it there and if you're at the place where you're going from small to medium Great, keep pushing on that. But what I'm talking about here is the value neurally of opting for the large option and what that does in terms of very much sending a strong message to your eating disorder that you're not listening to it, that you are going firmly in the opposite direction of it. And this kind of attack mentality around portions was really important for me when it came to actioning abundance. And I'd also like to say at this point, a lot of the things that I've spoken about here as those maybe slightly more accessible elements, as opposed to the first one I made about listening to your core self, doing all of this work proactively and intentionally actually helps to open the door to allow your body to talk to you more and to allow your core self to talk to you more. And so actually, maybe you're at a place where that first one feels quite far off. And so you're leaning more into the, what would you serve for somebody who's in recovery or asking for support from a recovery buddy to plate up dinners. Or maybe you're more mechanically approaching that filling your plate technique. Or maybe you're forcing yourself to go against the eating disorder resistance and to order that large meal. By you doing that, by you attacking the eating disorder, you are carving a path towards a place where your body and your core self are more able to talk to you. And so it may be that by doing those things, you start to more authentically and consistently connect with how much you want. 
And that is why proactivity, mechanical action taking, forcing yourself to do things is so important in recovery. Yes, recovery is all about honouring your hunger, eating without restriction, trusting your body, listening to your body. But when you've had an eating disorder for any period of time, it can get in the way of you and your body. And so actually there can be a very real need for forced mechanical action taking in order to rebuild those connections and to open that door once more. So I hope this video has been helpful today. I'm very excited to be able to finally get around to doing this. I'm looking forward to making following ones maybe even more practical, um, but I felt like this one was better suited to me kind of sitting down. I do think I'm going to take this approach to each one by taking each element of the actioning abundance approach and breaking it down into a handful of practical, actionable elements. So. If you have found this helpful, please do let me know in the comments below. Your support means the world to me. And until the next time, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day and I'll speak to you very soon.